Good afternoon, everyone. This is Joe Bacella, webinar organizer here at Chaken Analytics, and I'd like to welcome you to our presentation of Trade Options Like an Expert Using Advanced Options. Presenting today is Mark Chaken, founder and CEO of Chaken Analytics, along with Tony Zhang, co-founder of Options Play. Throughout our presentation, please submit your questions using the Zoom Q&A window, which is available in the upper left-hand corner of your screen. As a reminder, this webinar is being recorded and a copy will be sent to everyone who has registered. Now, Mark Chaikin created the Chaikin Analytics uh, platform to put the power of proven stock research tools in the hands of professional and individual investors. His latest contribution, the Chaikin Power Gauge Rating, is a proven 20-factor model that uniquely combines fundamentals and technicals. Now, for a quick disclaimer regarding options trading, um, Options trading carries a high degree of risk. Purchasers and sellers of options should familiarize themselves with options trading theory and pricing and all associated risk factors. Please read the, critic, the characteristics and risks of standardized options article available on the Options Clearing Corporation website. Trading options can be much more complex and challenging than trading stocks and is not suitable for all traders. Traders should always consult a tax advisor for any potential uh, tax consequences of their trading. Now to show us how it can be used together with the Options Play program, along with Chaikin Analytics for advanced options strategies, here's Mark Chaikin. Thank you, Joe, and welcome, everybody. Uh, appreciate everybody coming out uh, at the evening hour. This is the second webinar we've done today. We did one at 4.15, uh, which was more of a beginner's uh, webinar. This is an advanced webinar, and I think you're really going to learn some very interesting stuff with Tony Zhang, my partner, co-founder of Options Play with me. Um, my background, quite simple, 50 years on Wall Street, 45 years using technicals along with fundamental analysis. And when I was the head of the options department at a regional firm called Tucker Anthony, which had over 250 brokers and tens of thousands of options clients, I was very successful integrating technical analysis along with fundamentals and option uh, volatilities to try and make traders more profitable. One of the problems that we identified at Tucker Anthony is 95% of options traders lost money. And some of the reasons for that uh, will be clear when Tony describes the probability-based options approach that uh, options play affords us. And uh, I can tell you that we're going to address from a fundamental point of view, uh, one of the key things we identified that contributed to the fact that most options traders back then and now lose money. Along the way, I've been uh, mentored by some very smart and successful institutional investors. Some were colleagues and some were clients. The reason that's important is that the way we provide you done for you fundamental research is through the Chaikin Power Gauge Rating, our multi-factor model that I developed in 2010 which is the culmination of my life's work. And what I learned from all of these very smart institutional investors is incorporated into the Chaikin Power Gauge Rating. And you'll see in a couple of minutes how important that is to successful options trading. With that, it's my pleasure to introduce Tony Zhang, uh, co-founder of Options Play. Uh, and Tony, why don't you tell people a little bit about your background? Yeah, thanks, Mark. Thanks, everyone, for joining us this evening. Uh, my name is Tony Zhang. I run the product strategy team here at Options Play. So I help design the product from everything from the user experience to the algorithms that drive this platform. And today what we're going to do is we're going to show you the power of, of how by changing the user experience of options, how we can make it very easy for you guys to find strategies, regardless of whether you're a beginner or advanced options trader, how you can quickly leverage the uh, analysis that Mark Chaikin provides on the underlying stock and leverage that into a strategy that you could deploy instantly for whether you're bullish, bearish, or looking for income strategies on your underlying stock. So we'll be able to show you how you can implement that using the tool that we're going to show you today. Uh, I spent my career starting out on the FX side. So I was trading currencies and currency options uh, when I started my Career, and that's actually how I got my start with options trading um, and then decided to start this company about four and a half years ago because we realized that there weren't any tools that helped beginners easily uh, take advantage of options. So we, we created this tool that we'll show you today to allow you to anyone, regardless of your um, 
experience level to be able to quickly find option strategies on any underlying stock or ETF. Uh, thank you, Tony. And uh, I know that uh, people are going to find uh, your um, analysis uh, and your expertise extraordinarily valuable. Uh, in this evening's webinar, we're going to show you the keys to trading options like an expert. We're going to combine some of the intellectual property that's proprietary to Chaikin Analytics, the power gauge fundamental rating, and our unique relative strength analysis, along with our buy and sell signals with option plays, probability-based ideas generation capability. For advanced options traders, you're going to be able to zero in on complex strategies quickly, optimize strikes and expirations, which enable you to balance risk and reward. So it's a, it's a chock full of information uh, webinar, and let's get started. Uh, just as a way of background, uh, Chaikin Analytics has been uh, blessed with some very good publicity from um, people like John Carter at Simpler Trading, John Malden, Malden Economics, a great press from Barron's and Forbes, uh, as you'll see later, Benziga, who is a, a fast growing uh, fintech organization, um, uh, really validated the Chaikin Analytics idea generation capability, and it's being used by hedge funds like Paulson and Soros and by Fidelity Investments. So lots of validation in the media and from really good traders and uh, fintech experts about the Chaikin Analytics intellectual property. I'd like to start out by asking you a question. Are you thinking about a correction right now? Joe, I don't think we had time to put up a poll, did we? We did. Actually, let me go ahead and pull that oh, up right now. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Uh, I love when people are one step ahead of me. Well, uh, well, thank you, by the way. Um, but here's the question. Uh, so are you thinking about a correction in the market? Um, you'll see a few different choices there. Yes, I'm worried. Um, I'm unsure. Or no, I'm not, wor I'm not worries. Uh, I'm not worried. Um, so uh, let us know what you think. Now, uh, we'll give you about 10 more seconds. And uh, we would appreciate your response. We'll see what we get here. I see more than half the people have already responded. So thank you very much. And it looks like we've just about trickled down. And pretty similar results from earlier today. Uh, looks like about 50% of you are worried, 28% say you're unsure, and 21% say, no, I'm not worried. Well, we actually had 63% who are uh, worried about a correction, and, and that meshes very closely with our market view. Uh, we've had a nice rally this week. Uh, we're going to show you... Um, what the market looks like right now. Uh, the pre-Labor Day week is normally strong, and, and then we head into September. And as you've been reading about in the press, September and October, uh, or September leading in, uh, into October, are the worst uh, periods of the year for the stock market. And for a whole series of reasons, uh, some of which are on this chart, I think it's time to be cautious. Uh, we got a really nice rally here this week as we head into Friday when there's a lot of economic statistics out there. So let's look at this one year chart of the Spider ETF. This is the most actively traded instrument in the US market and it mirrors the S&P 500 large cap index. As you can see, we broke down just two weeks ago below that um, bottom trend line after banging up against 2,500 for almost uh, a month and a half, two months. And that decline came on very heavy volume. And typically, uh, high volume declines are not the end of uh, the correction. So I think that heading into tomorrow's economic reports, which may uh, throw a negative curveball at the market or not, but certainly after the Labor Day weekend, I expect that we'll see renewed selling pressure. And part of the reason that I'm concerned is Chaikin Money Flow, which many of you know because it's on all the online brokerage platforms, has been out there for over 35 years. Uh, it's on stockcharts.com as well, measures institutional buying and selling. And as you can see, since the uh, post-election rally that began in November, the institutions have been using the spider to get long the market. How do we know that? Because even on declines or on pullbacks or sideways movement, 
shaken money flow has stayed green or positive. Normally it fluctuates around the zero line, but look what's happening with this big rally uh, that we've just had off the lows of the last 10 days. Shaken money flow has stayed negative. I don't think the institutions are chasing this market. So if you're cautious on the market or expecting a further pullback, here's one way that you can use options to hedge a September, October decline. Again, these are not recommendations. These are ideas for informational purposes only. So on the left, uh, we've got an option strategy that was suggested by Options Play earlier today when the market was at, uh, the S&P was at 2468. The S&P closed around 2475. So it went up an additional three tenths of 1%. But at that point, if you were expecting a three to three, three and a half percent decline in the market, options play was suggesting that you do a bearish vertical put spread. And as Tony will tell you in a few minutes, typically a vertical spread has a better risk reward profile than an outright purchase of a put or a call. And that's why options play tends to favor it in its behind the scenes probability based analysis. And this, I'm sorry, Tony. You want to jump in here? Oh, yeah. I was just, uh, thanks. I just wanted to, to show everyone, you know, the power of this platform is not just to be able to show you these strategies, but more importantly, especially for those of you that are newer to options trading or trying to compare different option strategies, we present to you starting points so that you can compare what it looks like to short the stock versus buying a simple option strategy versus buying a more complex strategy that can be beneficial for you. So that's, I, that's all I wanted to add there, Mark. Yeah, and I would actually uh, point out that a vertical spread is actually a simple strategy. And I think uh, once you're at the advanced option stage, uh, buying a put option or a call option makes sense at certain points in time when there's uh, a big potential move coming. But in this case, let's assume that you think the low that we re saw recently at 24 .0 uh, seven on the S&P is going to hold. Well, that's still a 3% decline from where we are right now. So you could have bought the 247 put with a, an October 13th expiration date and, a, and sold the 239 put against it. That creates the bearish vertical put spread, $203 to hedge $25,000 worth of your portfolio against a 3% decline. It's also a great way to put on a directionally bearish trade, purely speculative, to make money on the downside. Because really, bull or bear, we don't care. If you can find the right strategy, do it. So here we have a trade that with a maximum risk of $203 per option contract, with the potential for a profit of almost 300%, if the S&P were to drop down to 2390 in the area of the most recent lows that we saw about two months ago at 2407. If you were expecting a larger decline, you could have bought the 247 put and told, sold the 236 put. Now, options play rates that a lower probability primarily because a four to 5% move in just about six weeks is unusual from a probability standpoint. But for $242, you increased, so an extra $39 for the, for the vertical put spread, you increased your profit potential $300. So that's a pretty good bet if you're convinced or feel strongly that the market may drop down to the 2360 level, which would be a full 5% decline from the high of 24.95. So this shows you how you can take what option play gives you, which was the first spread uh, recommendation on the left, modify it to your own opinion, which is okay. We may have more than a 3% decline. We might have a 5% decline from the highs. I'd like to benefit from that and protect my portfolio. And that gets you the option strategy on the right. So uh, just a, an advanced preview of what Tony's gonna be talking about. Now, Tony, I'm gonna let you take it over from here and I'll uh, control the slides, but I think you'll, you'll sort of um, understand what we're trying to convey here. 
Yeah, so these are some of the different ways that you can use options. And as you can see up top, when you're trading stocks, there's only two things that you can do. If you think the market's gonna move higher, you can go long the stock. If you think it's gonna move lower, you can short the stock. Um, both of those strategies have quite a bit of risk because if the stock goes to zero and you're long it, you could lose a lot of money. If let's say you're short the stock and the stock really takes off, you can also have a huge exposure, huge unlimited exposure. So the reason you people usually look at options is for a couple of different reasons. One is you want a non-linear payoff graph. Um, so a stock is a linear payoff graph. So for every dollar the stock goes up, you get paid a dollar. Um, for options, you can get that same upside. However, you can take it with limited risk. So that's really the, one of the huge advantages of trading options is that you can take a directional view, whether you're bullish or bearish, but have limited risk to what you paid for that option. Additionally, if you have different, so for example, and that, that's for the long call, long put, um, bull call spread, bear put spread, those are, those are strategies that you can use to take a, a directional view on an underlying stock with limited risk. Um, however, there are still many other ideas and, and, and viewpoints that someone may have that you simply can't take with the stock alone. So for example, if you think a stock's gonna stay exactly where it is, maybe a stock is range bound and hasn't been moving much every uh, for very long, you know, or maybe you have dividend stocks that don't move a lot. Those are types of stocks that you might have a neutral view on them. And those are, and there are strategies that you can take an options play and within options that will allow you to take advantage of even a neutral move. Um, and then uh, one of the, 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 the great examples is a lot of users here probably have underlying stock that you own in your account, whether it's stock that you've owned for a long time or stock you've just recently purchased. Um, there may be reasons that you want to hang on to that stock, but you're concerned about a correction, which is very common theme these days. A lot of a lot of you guys have technology heavy portfolios because that's really what's been performing, but you might be concerned about a pullback in some of those those stocks. So adding options can be a way that you can mitigate some risk on your portfolio. So even if you don't have a directional view that you want to bet, you can still use options to sell cover calls to generate some income. You can buy some puts to hedge a long position. And you know, there, are, there are a few other more advanced strategies like going long straddles and strangles and butterflies that will allow you to take advantage of either a neutral or a, a, what you expect, you know, a stock to really break out. Um, so those are some of the different ways that you can deploy options. There's so many combinations for me to go over them right now, but it just gives you a little bit of a taste as to all the different ways that you can u utilize options for your portfolio, whether you're- Well, that's to, the good news. Right. Um, so regardless of whether you're- that's or you have an existing position that you're trying to hedge or protect, there's a way that you can use options for it. Well, that's the good news. The bad news is without a capability like options play, you're really uh, deep in the weeds of analysis that I find painful and I ran an options department. And it all revolves around what's known as the Greeks. So Tony, why don't you sort of take a second to talk about the Greeks and how options play uh, basically eliminates that analysis uh, as a necessity for uh, both beginner and advanced options traders. Yeah, so when we started this company, we really wanted to change the way people experienced options. And for any of you that have tried to learn options or, or currently trade options, you know that there's a lot of terminology that you need to learn about before you can even start exploring it. And that's what we really wanted to do is take that away so that you can start exploring without having to be boggled down by a huge learning curve with all the different terminologies, different Greeks, just to understand how an option is priced. So that's why we created a new visual format to remove the chains and then provided a PL simulator so that you can understand the concepts of delta, gamma, vega, theta, and, and these Greeks that are very important for options trading, but in a visual format, and then you don't have to memorize what delta means. You can just use the slider and say, what happens if the stock goes up by a dollar? How does that affect the price of my option? Or if what if I let this expire go all the way to expiration? How does that affect the price of my option? So these are things that traditionally you'd learn using these Greeks, but it's very difficult to, to, to conceptually understand these things when you're reading them on paper. But when we can show it to you visually on the platform, you'll see that it's, it's much easier to understand.
And what's really interesting to me, Tony, is that when I ran the options department at Tucker Anthony between 1977 and 1981, all we knew about was Delta. Uh, if anybody knew about Gamma, Theta, Vega, they were, you know, the pros on the floor of the exchange. But this wasn't readily accessible or even knowledge um, uh, sort of accepted by options traders. So. What this says to me is that the biggest problem for options traders is information overload. And that's true if you're a stock trader, it's true if you're trying to manage your basic business or your life with uh, Facebook and Twitter and uh, Snapchat, and email and everything else that distracts us. And that's why we created Chaken Analytics. It's our solution to information overload and to enable the options trader to cut through the clutter, in November of 2015, we integrated options play. And, and on the screen here are three of the um, screen shots from options play. Normally, we do a live um, a sort of uh, cut at this point. But I think, Tony, you're uh, facile enough that you can take the screen and make it sing. Yeah, so just to backtrack a little bit about what you were talking about, when we started options, uh, options play, we were looking at the how we, options traders were, were, inter, were um, interacting with uh, the platforms that they have. And I looked at myself and I was an options trader that had four screens on my, monitor, on, on my desk because that was all the information that I needed to, to look at in order to make a trade. I had to look at charts, I had to look at chains, I had to look at analytical tools, P&L simulators, all of these things that I needed in order to decide, hey, is this an options trade that I wanna make? So what we wanted to do is put that all onto one screen so that you didn't need four monitors to get all the information you need. So as you can see on your screen right now, we present, we present three side-by-side P&L charts so that you don't have to constantly go from the chain to one analytical screen and then back and forth, which is what I used to do all the time. And I spent hours a day trying to go back and forth. What we want to do is present it to you so that you can have any three strategies side by side so you can compare. Should I buy the stock? Should I buy a call? Or should I buy the spread? And then provide the tools like the P&L simulator so that you can create any scenario and immediately see which one of these three strategies will give you the highest return. And this is all designed out of necessity because we used to have to spend so much of our time just to get all this information we've now presented to you in one screen so that you guys have all the information you need to place a trade. And of course, it gets even easier whether you're an advanced or a beginner options trader because look what uh, options play is done. Why don't you explain what this screen is all about, Tony? Yeah. So when, it, especially when it comes to options, we get a lot of questions regarding kind of what is, what is a call vertical? I don't know what that is. And that's perfectly normal if you're new to options trading or, and you're still learning. So what we wanted to do is not only provide a platform that will show you what strategies that you can trade and provide all the analytics, but also provide education so that we, we created a, a tab called plain English. So regardless of whether you're looking at a pre-built strategy that we've created for you, or you've created your own custom strategy, our, our program is, is able to interpret the strategies that you've created and play back to you in plain English so you understand what you're trading. So if you've never heard of a call vertical, you'll learn that it's a bullish strategy. It has limited risk with limited potential reward, and it will tell you what the stock needs to do in order for your strategy to be profitable. So it's really t teaching you about these strategies as you go about um, uh, navigating it, if you will, on the, on the options play platform. Uh, Tony, can I share something with the uh, people on the webinar tonight? Absolutely. Well, I've thrown Tony a curveball. Uh, this was a very hectic day. Uh, I had to create two decks, very different, one for beginners, one for advanced. And you'll see how we really are going to get into some advanced option strategies like leaps and cash covered put writing. Uh, so Tony hasn't seen this deck. Normally he goes through it. I get it to him by two o'clock in the afternoon. He's got a couple of hours to look at it. So everything Tony is talking about is is really extemporaneous. He's doing a great job. I want to thank you, Tony, and and just let the folks know that that, that we're sort of ad-libbing it tonight. But you can see how 
uh, you know, how powerful Tony's knowledge is about both the platform and the options market because it is very fluid. Here. Well, it's a platform that I use every single day. So let's see how Chaken Analytics adds to the options play platform. Chaken Analytics makes options traders more profitable by giving you a directional edge. Remember I said in the beginning that 95% of options traders lost money and still do. And the reason is they don't understand the importance of a directional edge. Now, what do we mean by a directional edge? Well, if you're making a bet by buying a, an option outright or doing a vertical put or call spread or any of these more complex strategies that we're going to get into, you basically need to know with some degree of reliability which direction a stock is going up or down otherwise you're just rolling the dice uh, and and you're like a weather vane in a hurricane spinning around so chicken analytics gives you the directional edge by combining fundamentals with technicals into a quantitative model then layering on six pairs of buy and sell signals for better timing because obviously in options your entries are absolutely critical and this is so consistent with the probability-based um, approach that options play took that when I first saw options play over two years ago, I said, if I were going to build an options analytics platform that was easy to use, probability-based, this was it. And so why should I build it? And that's why we licensed it. And subsequent to our licensing it, some very, very big brokerage firms like Merrill Edge, Raymond James, uh, Oppenheimer, Ameriprise, uh, have licensed it as well. So we were in the vanguard and we were validated by some of the very, very fine firms that I just mentioned who have also made options play available to their advisors and their clients. Now, options trading demands a discipline methodology. In choosing the stock, getting that directional edge. It starts with the power gauge rating and the industry group. Industry group strength is very critical because stocks move in packs and industries are affected by broad macro factors. So recently auto parts has been weak. Energy has been weak. Technology, as Tony said, has been strong. So your portfolios are probably loaded up with technology stocks. Apparel has been strong recently, as we'll see. And the insurance complex. Uh, and so uh, it starts with the power gauge. That's why it's at the top of the pyramid. At the bottom, just two technical indicators, shaken money flow and shaken relative strength. Options play actually has their own sort of momentum time frameworks to shorten an intermediate term. And then we layer in those buy and sell signals. Now, before we even talk about what the power gauge is made up of, I want to give you some examples of what bullish stocks and bearish stocks look like in Chaikin Analytics. So I'm going to introduce you to the concept of the classic Chaikin bull. This is ideal for bullish option strategies and swing trading. And it basically starts with the power gauge being bullish. So our multi-factor quantitative model is telling you that there's a high probability the stock is going to outperform the market and move up, particularly in uptrending markets. The stock is also in an uptrend because that's the best way to put the odds in your favor. You're not bottom fishing. You're going with the trend. It's outperforming the market. You want to be in the best of the best. If you're trading options particularly, there's a lot of leverage involved and you want to maximize that leverage with stocks that are likely to continue to outperform. And then finally, check in money flow, which as I said, has been out there for 35 years should be strong, telling you that the institutions are accumulating the stock. And here's our poster child for a classic shake and bull. It's a technology stock, applied materials. AMAT is the symbol. They make semiconductor equipment, manufacturing equipment. And the stock has had a bullish power gauge rating until just recently for well over a year as it's moved from the mid 20s all the way to 48. Along the way, relative strength has been strong. Now at the bottom of that chart is the power gauge rating as a ribbon that goes from red to yellow to green. Notice there's no red in there because this is a stock with strong fundamental potential. It's also been outperforming the market and notice the check in money flow, the accumulation that was going on between January and August. Now we've got a little bit of distribution 
There's some profit taking going on in technology stocks. And we see that the check and money flow hasn't gone positive as the stock has rallied from under 42 to about 45. That's a negative. That would encourage me to want to take profits in AMAT if I was still long the stock. And on the screen, we see two other key components of the check and analytics platform. We color code the quarterly earnings reports, red, gray, or green, to tell you whether the company beat Wall Street estimates or disappointed. And you'll see when we look at the factors in the power gauge rating how important that is. But notice that when they beat estimates, the stock spikes up here back in November, then again in February. Sorry about that. This is my Macintosh mouse that's very sensitive. Did it again in May. And actually, there's a positive earnings surprise just recently. On the screen are what we call our relative strength buy signals. Now, all six pairs of our buy and sell signals are on our website. Whether you're a visitor or a subscriber, we try to be as transparent as possible about what's in the power gauge so you can go to our website without having to buy anything and see what the basis for our sell signals and our buy signals are. In this case, the relative strength buy signal is a really powerful signal for options traders. It triggers when a stock has been outperforming the market, dips under its 21-day exponential average, and then goes back above it. Simple signal, very powerful, and it has a duration of four to eight weeks, meaning that when it's successful, which is roughly 70% of the time, especially when the power gauge is also bullish, so fundamentals and technicals agree with one another, the strength of the stock tends to persist for four to eight weeks. That makes it ideal for swing trading and for options trades where you can buy an in-the-money option to get a higher delta, meaning you're going to move more closely with the stock. You can give yourself some more time duration, which always helps. You can buy an out-of-the-money option with a lot of time left, so you don't run into something we're going to talk about in a few minutes called time decay. But the bottom line is everything you need to know to make an informed decision on a stock is on this chart. And then all you have to do is click on that options button and options play pops up with those three panels giving you the recommendation, highest probability strategy. Or if there's no high probability strategy, it'll tell you that as well. We also tell you the earnings dates and what the analyst estimates are, whether they're going up or down. This is absolutely critical to options trading because you've got to know when the earnings are due out and you've got to prepare for that. And if it's got a bullish power gauge rating, much more likely to get a positive earnings surprise as you see here with AMAT. Now let's go to the cut to the chase, as they say on uh, the TV show, uh, sports shows. It's nice to know that there's a great powerful signal out there, but how do you find it? In Chaken Analytics, we've got a screening program. So in this screen that I did for a webinar about a month ago, I screened for stocks in the Russell 3000 with very bullish ratings, strong money flow and relative strength. That's all everything we just looked at, large and mid cap stocks only. And then I added just one additional variable, the earnings surprise factor in the power gauge rating that we'll see in a minute has to be strong. I want to buy stocks and buy options on stocks that have a pattern of positive earnings surprises. So Anthem Health is in there, Activision, Blizzard, Electronic Arts, a lot of stocks that have been very strong, well care, fit the pattern, and you can find them very easily in Chaken Analytics. Now, classic Chaken Bear, just turn everything I said and put it on its head 180 degrees. Power gauge is bearish, trending down, underperforming the market. Check and money flow is red, not green, indicating that institutions are selling the stock. Look at Under Armour. This is a fallen angel. Fallen angels are the best put plays on the planet. Why? Because there are a lot of people who put their feet in cement, don't recognize when a stock is changing character and things are going wrong. And they stay long the stock, regretting it all the way down, and they're potential sellers as the stock finally craters. 
So Under Armour was loved by the institutions. They were outbidding Nike for some of the biggest um, uh, sneaker contracts. In fact, Stephen Curry has uh, an Under Armour contract that cost Nike, uh, that cost Under Armour about $236 million. And you can see that the fundamentals for Under Armour, as indicated by the power gauge, have been bearish for over a year. And the stock's been underperforming the market for a year with heavy institutional selling. So what does that mean? It means that you want Under Armour out of your portfolio. You want to find an opportunity to put on a bearish position. So the relative strength sell signals were ideal opportunities benefit on a downward move. You don't want this stock in your portfolio. And most importantly, you do not want a bottom fish. And if you watch CNBC, you would have seen four or five different gurus telling you that Under Armour was a buy because it was so heavily uh, discounted and oversold. And it was now coming down into value territory. And uh, it's got a long basing period, but all of that didn't influence the power gauge rating, which stayed, stayed bearish. And then you got a series of negative earnings surprises. They come in bunches. And each time you got a gap down in the stock. Now, recently, the stock made a new 52-week low because Kevin Durant, one of uh, basketball's elite, said, oh, nobody who's any good wears Under Armour sort of putting the needle into Stephen Curry. And believe it or not, the stock went down 4% just on that tweet alone. Making a new 52-week low with the market near new 52-week highs. You, these are ideal candidates for short sales. So I'm going to turn it back to Tony as we um, alternate between Chaikin Analytics and options play. Uh, yeah. So again, this is just a little recap of what you can do, why you should trade options. Number one, especially when you're when you're looking for short opportunities, shorting the stock may not always be an option, but buying puts uh, very well may be, and it, it allows you to take advantage of a bearish view on the underlying stock with limited risk. So even if the stock shoots up to new 52 week highs, your risk is limited to what you've paid for that put, and that's very attractive, especially for you for bearish trades, um, and and it allows you to take directional views on both sides, really. Um, and then lastly, if you own stock, this is really the important piece because most of you that are trading options will fall into this category. You probably own stock in your account, and for whatever reason you want to hang on to that to that stock, you can generate some income using options by selling covered calls against stock that you own. That requires you to do nothing new other than adding some short calls to your portfolio, which will generate some income. And then conversely, if you have some thoughts or you're concerned about some corrections, buying some puts will allow you to stay in that stock so that you don't create a taxable event if you have a tax, uh, if you're in a tax account, but still might be able to hedge your downside by buying some puts, uh, which is one of the best ways to, to use options if you're new to this. So um, I thought we'd start out, Tony, with some simple option strategies as we get into the more complex. So why don't you walk the folks through you know, some of the variables and uh, obviously options play makes some of this uh, child's play because you deal with this under the hood. Yeah. So just to talk a little bit about, you know, when you're when you're taking a simple option strategy, the simplest of them is simply buying a call if you're bullish or buying a put if you're bearish. Now, there's a lot of things that you need to consider, like what expiration should you choose? Should you choose a weekly, a monthly or a longer dated option called leaps? What strike price should you choose? Um, buying in the money, out the money, out of the money. These are all different types of things that you need to choose before you're able to see any analytics. So that's what we try to do is change that. So that what we do is we provide a starting point for you. So if you're bullish, we'll present to you a monthly expiration that's about 45 days out because that's usually what most traders are, you know, they, they have outlooks that are usually one to two months out. Um, and we usually start you off at at the money because that's a good starting point regardless of um, how bullish or how bearish you are on the, on, the, on, on the underlying stock. We'll start you off at at the money. And the premium you pay is effectively the cost of the option times 100 because each option contract reflects 100 shares 
of the underlying stock. And the one thing that you have to consider is the break-even price. So when you pay for a, a call or a put, there's a break-even price. And that's the, that's the price that the stock needs to go above if you're buying calls or below if you're buying puts in order for these strategies to be profitable. And that's what we'll be able to show you on this screen uh, with the P&L charts is, is to give you that visual uh, feel, if you will. Um, the, the second next, uh, the second uh, or a slightly more advanced strategy, but still a fairly simple strategy is a vertical spread. This is my favorite strategy because what it does, it allows you to take advantage of that upside that we're talking about. However, uh, because when you're buying calls and puts, they sometimes can be quite expensive. Um, the stock needs to move quite a bit in order for these strategies to be profitable. A better strategy is actually trading a vertical spread. So what you're doing is you're buying one call option at a slightly low at a slightly lower strike price, and then you're selling a further out of the money strike price uh, call option. And what that does is it offsets the price of buying an at the money call option, and that that small amount of money that you're saving actually goes to increase the returns if it goes in your favor. But more importantly, if the stock goes against you, you're risking less money. So it's really beneficial on both sides if it goes in your favor or if the stock goes against you. And that's why it's one of my favorite strategies to trade. I always think of this as a casino. If you're selling an out of the money option as part of your vertical spread, you're sort of the house, you're taking in some money and, and those small incremental profits uh, add up that, that lowering the cost over and over and over again in the course of your trading makes a big difference. So uh, here are some of the other things that go into options trading and Tony, you're better <laughs> equipped to, you know, uh, briefly gloss over this than I am. Yeah. So with every option, there's two parts of an option price. So there's the intrinsic value, meaning how much of, of the uh, option contract you can immediately exercise uh, above the strike price. And then there's time value, which is the uncertainty portion of options. And that's the part that a lot of people have a tough time understanding is how do you value an option? But it's actually really simple. There's the intrinsic value, which is the, the difference between the stock price and the strike price. And there's time value, which is the uncertain part. And the uncertain part is the part that we're mostly concerned about when we're trading options options is how, how much uncertainty is priced into the option. Sometimes it can be very rich, sometimes it can be very cheap, and it's very difficult to tell, especially if you're new to options trading, is the telling, figuring out is an option too expensive, is it cheap? And that's really why we created the options play score, so that for any strategy we present to you or for any strategy you create yourself, you get a scoring mechanism, mechanism that tells you how is the risk reward on this particular trade? Is it attractive, is it not attractive? And the and the and this and the the math behind it really uh, or the influence of that actually came from poker players thinking about am I getting enough reward for the risk that I'm taking and that's really how we created the options play score and it's color coded for you so you don't have to memorize it red means bad meaning you have a poor risk reward or uh, time value is very rich and you're paying a lot of money for this option and if it's cheap you get this green nice green score as Mark was showing you before um, telling you that the risk reward on a particular trade is great so uh, the options play score if you're if you're new to options trading pay attention to it because it will not only help you find good trades but more importantly prevent you from making bad ones um, is in, the other thing to consider is time decay. So when we talk about the uncertainty of options, meaning how much how much uncertainty is priced in, the more time there is between the now and expiration, the more uncertainty it is. And the closer you get to expiration, that uncertainty goes away because you're looking at a smaller window of time and that's what time decay is. So as time goes by, you have less and less uncertainty and, and that and that uncertainty factor of the option will actually decrease in value. So that's actually something that's working against you if you're long options, but it's working in your favor if you're short options, which is why, again, that, that vertical spread is one of my favorite strategies because not only am I able to take a directional view on an underlying stock, but I'm also able to capture that time value or at least not let time value be um, a, a contributing factor to losses in my account. So that's really why 
these are some of the concepts that you need to understand in this particular case is theta, but we'll actually show it to you on the PNL simulator on options play. So you don't have to memorize this or, or understand this conceptually. You just know that if, as time goes by, we'll show you exactly how, how your option pricing is affected by time. Um, so talking about cover calls, again, this is probably where most of you, especially if you're new to options trading, or even if you have traded options, this is where most of you will probably be uh, uh, using this strategy because it's the most popular strategy. About 40% of retail volume is in this single strategy alone. It's when you own an underlying stock. So think about Apple or Facebook or one of these stocks that most of you probably have in your portfolio. And it just sits there. A lot of them, may, some of them may have a dividend, some of them may not pay a dividend. So one of the great ways to introduce some yield into your portfolio is by selling a cover call. And what you're doing is you're effectively giving uh, the rights away to sell your stock at a, a predetermined price. And in order for doing that, you're going to receive some income. And you can do this month after month as long as the stock doesn't go above that strike price. And it's one of the most popular ways to add some yield to your portfolio. And we will show you how you can do this instantly for any stock that you have in your portfolio. If you just click on the options tab, click on income, we'll show you where that optimal starting point for your cover call is. Uh, we were talking about covered rights, and uh, Tony did a good job of talking about why you do it. Here's a stock that we talked about on a webinar that we did with Tony uh, back in November, where Textron had just broken out in the aerospace group after the election. If you waited for a consolidation and then bought the stock around 46, uh, it rallied nicely. And in November, we suggested a covered right. Uh, that expired worthless. It was out of the money, took in about $300 per uh, 200 shares. Then on a webinar we did with Tony uh, in April, another covered right in Textron. We did another options play webinar in um, July and another um, covered right, the August uh, 48 calls that expired on the 18th, uh, worthless took in, in those three trades alone per 100 shares, about $400. Uh, so um, roughly 9% as the stock was sort of going sideways. And now as we see the stock continues to go sideways, no longer has a bullish rating, but we have the opportunity to sell yet another out of the money call. This time the October 50s expire in, uh, on October 20th taking in another $300. So the bottom line is roughly $1,200 taken in, divided by two, $600 a share, 12%, plus the appreciation of the original purchase from 46 up to the current price of 49. Happy to get rid of it at 50 plus the premium. This is an example of how you can do what's known as rinse and repeat. Buy a good stock, wait till it goes up, sell a covered call. If it expires worthless, fine, do it again. If they call it away, that's great. So Tony, I'm going to turn it back to you after I read this testimonial from Jim Davidson, who had been speculating in options. And he said, a better night's sleep and impressive returns. After getting hammered in the August 2015 correction, I decided to take advantage of what Chaken Analytics really offers. That is a better night's sleep and some impressive returns. Rather than swinging for the fences and striking out, I've learned to do what the system tells me and enjoy my 16% return. And that's roughly what Jim would have gotten out of Textron, thanks to the Chaken team for giving me my confidence and a good night's sleep back again. So this really does work, Tony. And then we've got one other example here on L3, where um, if you follow that buy signal at roughly uh, 172 back here, in July, you saw the stock run up to 185. You could have sold it at the upper volatility band, or if you're still in it, here's what you can do. This is called writing a covered call against stock you already own, as opposed to a buy right. And you can sell the out of the money call, the 185, which is roughly uh, where the stock peaked, and get $350 per 100 shares for an option that's due to expire uh, in a couple of months, and look at the return on that. It's a 14% annualized return. It's a lot of premium income for a stock that yields only $1.65. You're taking in 
uh, approximately uh, 2%, so it's more than the annual dividend. And again, if the stock goes up beyond 185, which is the previous peak, you're happy to have it called away at 185 plus the 350 premium. So uh, an example of how you can use the volatility bands as a guide to where you should pick your strike prices. I know Tony favors strike prices that are much further out of the money because the returns are higher. Um, I like to use the volatility bands as my guide to where to sell options because they do often turn the stock back. And I'm happy to sell a stock at the volatility plan, uh, the volatility band plus that really nice premium. So again, apologies for the uh, internet delay, but um, before we get Tony back for the advanced strategies, let me give you a little background on the power gauge. Simple display, a lot of computations going on under the surface. During earnings season, as you'll see, it can be your GPS to very, very big options profits. John Carter of Simpler Trading, probably one of the best traders on the planet, called this an awesome meter for stocks. He liked the fact that it combined 20 plus technical and fundamental factors to anticipate a stock's potential. So what got John so excited? Well, we cover financials, earnings, technicals, and expert opinions in four primary factors with five sub factors in each of them. This is what reflects what I learned in 30 years of working with institutional investors. The model has worked for six years because it's based on how Wall Street works. This is what Wall Street investors, big institutions and hedge funds look at before they make an investment decision, but they don't all look at each of these factors. Everybody has different styles and different time horizons. So these factors re represent in the financial metrics, which are 35% of the model, what Warren Buffett looks at, Seth Klarman, the great value investors going all the way back to Graham and Dodd. But we also have earnings surprise in there. Remember we highlighted how important earnings surprise was, get spikes up and down when companies disappoint or exceed expectations. They lead to earnings estimate revisions. It's the single biggest driver of short-term stock price movements. And we've found a way to turn earnings surprises to your advantage because the power gauge anticipates them. They come in bunches, as we've seen, and we're gonna see more examples of that. And then finally, industry group relative strength, very important because as we said, stocks move in packs. And when an industry group tends to reflect macro factors that are affecting not just one company, but a lot of companies. When a group gets strong or weak, that tends to persist for extended periods of time, as we'll see with the auto parts stocks starting in April and the energy stocks that have been weak starting in January and the tech stocks that have been strong for over 12 months. So what's been the performance of the power gauge rating? Very bullish stocks in 2016, up 32%. This is using a 3,000 stock universe, the Russell 3000. Very bearish stocks, only up 9.5%. It was a bull year. You wanted to focus on the very bullish stocks and avoid the very bearish. 2015, totally different picture. Energy stocks were in a bear market. Small caps were in a bear market and the very bearish rated stocks in the Chaikin power gauge methodology, and we've already seen Under Armour and a couple of others, down 17%, very bullish stocks flat, which is what the market did in 2015. So very important to realize that if you avoid the very bearish stocks or make them your put candidates, and you focus your longs and your long option trades on bullish stocks, you're skewing the odds in your favor. Now, two other partnerships validate the power gauge rating. We have a partnership with NASDAQ where we created three NASDAQ Chaikin indices, large cap, small cap, and dividend achiever. And New York Life's Index IQ mainstay subsidiary licensed all three of these indexes back in February, registered them with the SEC for the purpose of bringing out exchange traded funds. The first one was introduced in May, the Chaikin the IQ Chaikin small cap index, this is not a recommendation to buy that small cap index, merely validation of the Chaikin power gauge. This has been the most successful multi-factor ETF launch of 2017. As of today, has over 170 million in assets in just three months. 
It's the, mo it's the third most successful ETF launch out of 98 in 2017. So we're very proud of that. But more importantly, both NASDAQ and New York Life, which manages over $700 billion, did their homework. They determined that the Chaikin power gauge was an important in input into building indices and portfolios. And you can harness the power of the, the um, intellectual property called the Chaikin power gauge to energize your options trading. So a concept that we think is very important that we've really been talking about, I'd like to put a name on, which is the dynamic duo. It's the combination of our fundamental power gauge rating and Chaikin relative strength. Basically, the market is agreeing with the model. You're putting the odds on your side. The dynamic duo finds big winners and big losers. Therefore, it's great for options trading because superior returns come from stocks that are going to either outperform or underperform the market. So here's an example. Joe was just talking about Anthem Health. Joe, thank you for filling in when the uh, technical glitch surfaced. Right after the election, as Joe probably mentioned, the power gauge rating turned bullish and check in relative strength turned bullish. We call that a personality change. When a stock goes from underperforming to outperforming, it's changed character. You need to know about it. And look at all that accumulation going on as the stock was moving from 130 all the way to 195, still making new highs today in a market that's tempting to get up to new highs. And along the way, oversold buy signals. These are new eight-day lows on stocks with a bullish power gauge rating. They're great entry points for options trading. They have a duration of five to 10 days, so it's a little shorter than the ideal options play um, time framework, but they work. And typically these work two out of three times. So if you can get a good options trade from the entry point to the upper volatility band, two out of three times, that is putting the odds in your favor and options play is gonna find you the right option strategy. Now on the downside, here's a stock to sorrow drugs, to sorrow Inc, a drug stock, uh, had been outperforming the market, but notice that the power gauge rating at the bottom was yellow. It, the fundamentals were not supporting that big momentum move. And then the stock rolled over, you got a bearish personality change, the power gauge turned bearish, institutions went from buying the stock to selling it, and look at those wonderful sell signals. And you've had three earning surprises in a row, actually four, but three where the stock has traded down, making new lows. You've had a nice little rally here. We've got another overbought sell signal, ideal time to buy put options. And let's look back two years to a stock that looked very similar in here to the way Tesoro looks today, Yelp. I made it my bearer stock of the week in my weekly market letter called Chicken Market Insights back here in 2015 in July. The stock was due to report earnings. I suggested buying put options ahead of that earnings report because there had been two gap downs prior Two quarters were disappointing, the stock gap down. Remember I said, patterns repeat on Wall Street, especially these earnings surprises. There's never just one of them. So the stock did report a negative earnings surprise. It dropped from about 34 all the way to 23 and ultimately bottomed out at 20. And we got this testimonial in July from Mike T two years ago, netted 17,400 and eight dollars in profits this morning. I've had more success in the past two weeks using Chaikin than I've had the rest of the year. Had the biggest winner of the year today on Yelp earnings based on Mark's bearish play of the week. Risk 7,000 made 17. Now Mike actually gave us his trade blotter. I think this is from Interactive Brokers. What's interesting here is that this was July of 15. We hadn't yet integrated options play into Chaikin Analytics. That happened in roughly October or November of 2015, almost two years ago. Mike put on three different put trades, different strike prices, different expiration dates. Bottom line is he knew what he was doing, made a lot of money. 
Now with options play integrated into Chaikin Analytics, you can put on trades like this without having the deep knowledge that Mike T had. And the reason I bring up testimonials that go back two years is to emphasize the point that this is not a fly-by-night approach. It's based on 50 years of my experience trading stocks, advising institutions, working with options traders, taking everything I've learned and putting it all on one screen for the benefit of people who want to make decisions and not be glued to a trading terminal. It's all there for you. You can make these, put on these trades in less than 15 minutes a day and let them work for you when they're running and cut your losses when they're not. So one final pattern, and then we're going to get back to some options trades. Institutions love to fly under the radar screen and distribute stock surreptitiously or accumulate it that way. And there's the pattern we've been teaching institutional investors for the last 25 years. It's called bearish money flow sell alert. It happens when a stock makes a new high near the upper volatility band or gets overbought and money flow, instead of going green, indicating that institutions are buying the stock, actually stays red or negative. And we see this in advanced auto parts back in February. Not only do we have a bad internet connection, but we've got a flaky mouse. So when a stock does that, it gives you a chance to take money off the table at what is often the absolute high. It's the only indicator I know that enables you to do that. But it also highlights the fact that when the relative strength and the power gauge turn bearish and the institutions are selling, you want to be out of that stock looking for opportunities to buy put options. And in fact, you got a negative earnings surprise. You trade it all the way down. And then right here in April, we made this one of our bearish stocks of the week. In fact, we highlighted three auto part stocks, Advanced Auto, AutoZone, and O'Reilly. And we said, sell them on a rally because they were down here at new, 50, at new lows. And sure enough, the stock rallied into the earnings report, dropped dramatically, and now you've got a second negative earnings surprise. The stock has gone from 150 to 85. Now, the bearish money flow sell alert came at 170, but let's assume you wanted to wait for confirmation. You could have been selling it at 150, taking your profits down here on this spike to 100, rallies up, put on another position. Now we've got another sell signal in the stock. It's rallied from $80 all the way to 97. Now, what if Advanced Auto Parts is going to go back down and test those lows? Well, a put position based on vertical put spread is going to look very attractive. So now I'd like to turn it back to Tony because we're going to look at some advanced option strategies. And I put my name in there only because I uh, may uh, interject here. But Tony, if you're up for it, uh, let's look at some advanced option strategies, which, which is what the folks who signed up for the webinar um, are looking for. Sure, absolutely. So one of my favorite uh, option strategies, especially for those of you that are mostly stock traders, is cash secured puts, selling naked puts on stocks that you want to own. Um, and the reason that you want to do this, and you typically want to do this on stocks where you are bullish on, but you think the current price is a little too rich or a little too expensive. I think some of the biotech stocks are a great example of this. You know, they had a huge breakout over the last couple of days. Um, so, but you might think that healthcare is going to continue going higher, which I certainly do, but I think at 52 week highs, they're a little bit too rich to be buying at the current levels. Selling a cash secured put is a great way to potentially generate some income and put in an order to buy the stock at a lower price. Um, so especially for those of you that are, maybe you own stock, but you don't mind owning some more and you want to generate some income. This is a great strategy that you can deploy in your portfolio. And what options play does is when you, for any stock that you're looking at in uh, Chaken, when you click on the options tab, there's going to be a tab that's called 
called income. And you're going to get both a, a cover call idea as well as a cash secured put idea. This is designed to give everyone a starting point so that even if you've never traded a cash secured put, so we have Michael Kors here up as, as an example, as you can see, this is telling you Michael Kors is currently trading at 42. This is a stock that had a huge jump on earnings a couple of weeks ago. So perhaps you think this is, uh, you, you like the stock, but maybe you want to purchase at a slightly lower price, like $40. This allows you to essentially put in an order to buy this stock at 40 but receive $70 for every 100 shares that you want to buy. So this is going to give you 1.65% yield over the next 36 days, which equates to about a 16% annualized yield, which is a huge amount of yield to be picking up just to buy a stock that you want to buy at a lower price. Um, so that's why this is one of my favorite strategies, especially for those of you that may not consider yourselves as options traders. Maybe you consider yourself as a long-term long-term buyer and holder of stock, this is a strategy that you can deploy uh, to, to, as an alternative to simply buying the stock outright at the current price. And Tony, what I like to do, and I've seen this work over and over again, if you're thinking of buying 200 shares of Michael Coors, buy 100 at 42 and then sell that cash covered put uh, with a 40 strike price for the other 100. If it keeps going up, you're going to be happy as a clam and pocket that premium. And if it goes down to 40, then you've bought a uh, stock at a lower price minus the premium. So it works both ways. And here's a second example for you to work with. Uh, yeah, Hartford Insurance. So notice how this is pulled back a little. So this, you might, you know, you're not buying at all time highs. You're not buying at the 52 week high. You may get a little bit more aggressive. So you might, as you can see that thing's just trading near that vol lower volatility band. So, and, and also right above that moving average. So there might be a good time to consider getting in, but still, you can still enter an order to buy at 50, 54 and still receive $78 for every 100 shares. That's 24% annualized return on your on the short put and this allows you to buy the stock at $54 which just right might be the price that you want to buy at so that's why this is one of my favorite strategies for those of you that are uh, equity investors consider this as an additional strategy to generate some yield while you enter your orders to, to buy stock that you fundamentally like and the reason I chose the at the money uh, cash covered put is because Hartford is down, uh, obviously because of the uh, devastation in Texas and the hurricane. Uh, and um, institutional investors know that there are reserve funds and that insurance companies are uh, expecting this periodically. So uh, you've had better than a, um, uh, a volatility band to volatility band correction in a, in a reasonably non-volatile stock. So in this case, I determined that with the stock oversold, Chaikin Power Gauge still bullish, money flow still positive at that lower volatility band and our long-term moving average, that this might be the time to step in. Again, buy 100 shares at 54 and sell a cash-covered put. You'll get your other 100 if it gets exercised by the expiration date, which is 22 days away. It's a pretty short-term uh, time framework. That's why there's a 24% annualized return on that. So I know that cash covered puts were something that Tony loved, uh, but here's another sophisticated strategy. And this is one, as you'll see in a minute, that we explored in a webinar that we did um, a year ago in July. So Tony, why don't you talk about um, leaps and particularly um, uh, calendar leap spreads as a replacement for stock? Yeah, so you can... Uh, Many times, if you look at a deep in the money call, they replicate the payoff of an underlying stock. So if you think the stock's going to, if you think a stock's going to take off, but maybe you don't want to put all the cash down to buy a hundred shares of it, you can consider buying a leap, um, which is essentially just a call option that expires more than nine months, nine months away from now. And if you buy a deep in the money uh, call option, that's that's a very long longer dated option. It will trade very similar to the stock, almost dollar for dollar. So as the stock goes up by a dollar, your option will go up by a dollar. So that's and and what you can do is, in a lot of times, it'll cost you about a third to a quarter to perhaps even a fifth of the cost of buying a hundred shares of the stock. So it's an, it's a way that you can utilize options to replicate buying the stock without putting up the full amount of capital in order to invest in. 100 shares of that stock. So we have. So, Tony, 
this is the chart that we used in a, a, a July webinar, early July webinar a year ago. Uh, Comcast, which has split two for one subsequent to this, was trading at 63. And um, I don't think uh, it's too big of a leap to call a 60 strike price call in the money, deep in the money. Um, and so this is what that spread looked like. Uh, and if you've got any comments that will um, help people understand what they're looking at, that would be most appreciated. Yeah. So at the time, what we had bought in 2000, uh, this was in July of 2016, is we bought a two-year option that expired in, or a year and a half option that expired in January of 2018. We bought the $60 call strike strike for $8.70. So as you can see here, buying 100 shares of that stock would have cost us $6,300. This only cost us uh, $870 uh, to buy that uh, same uh, 100 shares. So approximately... Uh, what is that? 15% of the underlying price to buy uh, that call option. And what we were able to do is we, we were able to sell a shorter dated option, the August 65 calls, and received $103 in exchange for that. So what that allowed us to do was actually lower the cost of buying that call from $870 down to $767. So we further decreased the cost of buying an, a, a, a upside call by about... A, about one eighth of the, of the value. And that has really given us a huge um, upside return, even though the stock hasn't moved a ton in our favor, but we still were able to capture a much larger return. That's something that you would not have been able to do if you had just bought the stock or if you had just bought the call alone. By selling that call, we were able to take advantage of a much larger move on the underlying stock. But the reality is the stock split two for one, and uh, therefore it has had a big move. The yellow arrow is where that position was put on. Uh, the option happened to expire worthless uh, because the next four weeks saw the stock sell down. And there were probably five or six opportunities in the last year to sell the um, out of the money call. The stock rallied to the upper volatility band. Uh, each time reducing the cost of the leap. And I think in the course of uh, 12 months that the leap would be free at this point. Yeah, so if you go back to that previous slide. 31 and a half. Right, so if we go back to the previous slide, as you can see here, we were able to reduce the cost of that leap, which again is meant to replicate long stock by about, by, by about, 15 20 percent about 15 percent of the cost and that was only over 60 days so if we were able to do this six times and 10 times in a row that would have mitigated the entire cost of being long this stock down to zero so that's a very very attractive potentially very very attractive compared to spending spending $6,300 just to get 100 shares of that stock, which gives you almost the same exposure as when you're long that uh, January 60 call. So that's really why, uh, you know, covered leaps is one of the great uses of options, especially for long-term buyer and holders, because you can take advantage of that long call, but at the same time, sell some calls against it and get your cost of being that long that call pretty much down to zero if you were able to do this efficiently. So um, thank you, Tony, for that good, uh, solid analysis of leaps. Let's just end the webinar by looking at long plays during earnings season and try and um, get out ahead of the next technology glitch. Uh, energy has been weak. This is the XLE, the Select Spider Sector Energy ETF. It had a bearish personality change back in late January. At that point, you want to be out of all energy stocks and or looking really carefully at any long energy stocks in your 401k plan and trading them from the short side. And the ideal strategy is to look for a stock like Schlumberger with a bearish rating that's institutionally uh, under pressure, it's underperforming the market, wait for a sell signal ahead of an earnings report and put on a put spread or buy a put option. And uh, we have two examples. Webinar I did in April, we recommended a put spread the, the 79 and a half 74 bearish vertical put spread had the potential for 220 percent in profit 
Uh, it expired in May. It expired uh, with the stock well below 74 as the stock was dropping 15%. So you made that full profit. And now again today, we've got a sell signal on Schlumberger, which has been making new 52-week lows. And the premise here is that energy stocks will continue to make new lows because the power gauges on most of them are bearish. There's not one energy stock in the S&P 500 with a bullish power gauge rating. So if Schlumberger is going to make a new low down to 59 and a half, which is really just a 5% drop from where it was trading earlier today, you can make um, a 200% profit yet again by buying uh, a vertical put spread for $134. That's your total risk. And Tony, if you have some comments on that, we'd love to hear them. Uh, yeah, so this is a pretty standard implementation of options play, and this is really designed to give everyone that ideal starting point when you have a, a powerful uh, tool like like um, Chicken Analytics to give you these sell signals on a, a, a stock in a very weak sector right now. This allows you to very quickly see the difference between shorting the stock, buying a put, buying a put vertical, and you can see exactly what your expected return is if you think the stock's going to head lower as um, as the analysis is doing. So the PL simulator at the bottom shows you that if the stock goes lower, you can see as much as a 200% return by trading that spread versus if you had just shorted that stock, you make a 6% return. So that's that's really here the power of options, how you can apply that leverage. And yet, even if you're completely wrong, you're only risking $134 per contract. So even if the stock shoots up to $100, your maximum risk is at $134. But you could potentially make $266 if we are correct and the stock moves lower. Now, money management is really critical here, as Tony knows. If you were to put $6,300 into that put option instead of buying a, a shorting 100 shares of stock, you're actually increasing your risk. So uh, it's all about position size uh, relative to uh, what you want to lose on a given trade. So you might want to put uh, five uh, put spreads on for $650 versus shorting 100 shares at $6,300. Uh, the risk is probably about the same, but the profit potential is huge. And uh, that's just good money management. So uh, you could have done this back in 2015 with Kinder Morgan because the uh, XLE had a bearish personality change back in 2015 in August, in 2014 rather, Kinder Morgan stayed up uh, sort of a levitation act loved by the hedge funds until March of 15, at which point power gauge turned bearish and relative strength turned bearish and institutions started selling. And along the way, as it dropped from 40 to 10, there were so many wonderful put buying opportunities. Since this is a smaller cap stock, more volatile, uh, didn't have the same, uh, you know, sort of solid institutional base as Schlumberger, you got a 75% drop in this stock as the XLE was dropping 50% from peak to trough, August, July of uh, 14 to February of 16. So these patterns repeat, and when they come up, you should be aware of them so that you can put on these trades. Uh, let's just uh, look at a couple of other earnings trades. This is from a web I did a month ago, uh, July 24th. In our weekly market letter, we highlight the stocks that are due to report earnings, but we add that one critical piece of information that gives you the directional edge is the power gauge bullish or bearish. So I highlighted some stocks back then. Boeing was due to report bullish power gauge rating. It had a positive earnings surprise and spiked up more than 12%. Starbucks bearish power gauge rating. Stock was 58, dropped sharply. Seagate, STX, CMG, Chipotle, bearish ratings, both dropped sharply, as did Helmerich and Payne, also in the energy complex. So let's look at a couple of them. Helmerich and Payne had already reported a negative earnings surprise. We highlighted it back in April. The stock dropped from 66 all the way to 50. It then rallied up to 56. Wall Street is ever hopeful. Then they had another negative earnings surprise, and the stock dropped from 56 to new 52-week lows at 42 and a half. These are absolutely fabulous 
limited risk, not no risk, but limited risk, put buying opportunities or vertical put spread opportunities. The payoff is huge when a stock drops 20% on an earnings surprise. Then Seagate, very similar, bearish earnings surprise, repeating what it did back in April, the stock spiked down from 39 all the way to 32 and then ultimately to 30 and it's going nowhere. Fabulous put buying opportunity. We highlight this every, these every week in our weekly market insights. So now I'd like to end the webinar with uh, our newest innovation. It's so powerful that it got us the Benziga FinTech Award for Best Ideas Platform. Benziga is a uh, news and earnings information service out of Detroit. Uh, three years ago, they started the FinTech Awards to honor people who are bringing breakthrough technology to the public, to the trading community. And there were 20 people nominated for Best Ideas Platform. They have about 15 different categories. And Chaken Analytics won the, the award this May for Best Ideas Platform. And we were presented the award by Mr. Wonderful, Kevin O'Leary from Shark Tank. So very proud uh, for all of the people, the 25 people in Philadelphia uh, who are dedicated to our client success. Joe Bacella, who heads our customer success team, Josh and David, and everybody who does the programming and the marketing really deserve the kudos for this best ideas platform. So what was it that got Benziga so excited? It's something we call our stock discovery engine. In the same way that Spotify finds you music that you're going to like, or Netflix finds you movies, or Amazon finds you everything else in life, Chaken Analytics uses a relevance-based discovery engine. That's what these other technologies utilize enables you to input a stock. In this case, for a webinar I did on May 25th, I input advanced auto parts, which as we saw had a bearish rating, was, was due to drop below 100, ultimately bottomed out at 85. But back in May, I wanted to find other bearish auto parts stocks to potentially recommend or other retailers, and it identified the usual suspects. AutoZone and O'Reilly. O'Reilly was 240 on its way to 170. Macy's took a big hit with a negative earnings surprise, but it also recommended potential swaps. So if I wanted to stay in the retail sector back in late May, the stock discovery engine was suggesting Best Buy. And the reason I liked Best Buy is everybody assumed Amazon would kill Best Buy, but miraculously Best Buy has found a way to prosper even as other retailers are being destroyed by Amazon. And I knew that Best Buy was due to report earnings a day after the webinar. So on that webinar, on May 25th, having just seen a oversold buy signal in Best Buy, I, I suggested that people put on a bullish call spread ahead of that earnings report. Had a great risk reward ratio. Fortunately, the stock reported better than expected earnings and spiked up from 50 all over 61. And that put was put spread was instantly profitable. As you'll see in a minute, it pulled back and then gave you another opportunity to buy it. And then sadly, in spite of a positive earnings surprise two days ago, the company uh, made some noise about how they may not be able to maintain these fabulous profit margins and Wall Street being very skittish, uh, decided it was time to get out of the stock, but plenty of opportunity. And the difference between buying the spread back in May when we recommended it on the webinar is that the stock was in a sideways pattern for a month, whereas ahead of this current earnings report, it was trading at new 52-week highs. You skew the odds in your favor if you buy when the stock is oversold or after a sideways pattern. And we got this testimonial from a new Chaken subscriber, 257% in 24 hours on earnings. Gave options one more try. I was surprised with the results. A Best Buy options trade was my biggest winner. I don't think I would have ever attempted an earnings trade without the guidance in your webinars. This is from a brand new subscriber, Fraser L. 
and it's a testimony to the onboarding and the educational webinars that Joe Bacella does four or five times a week, and he'll tell you about it at the end of the webinar when we make you a very special offer as we're now about to wind down the webinar. So one more example. I mentioned that I made Starbucks my bearish stock of the week in July at 58.76, reported a negative earnings surprise, dropped to 53, but I wanted to find restaurant stocks. And so I entered Starbucks into the stock discovery. Great earnings trade. Tom Gentile writes the options column for technical analysis, stocks and commodities magazine every month. He's a recognized options guru. He's just bought back Optionetics, which was his options education company that got sold to Charles Schwab, an options trader. And he sees in our charting programs and the signals to trade options more profitably and high praise from someone who has, so we've gone through analytics that we've showed you, the bottle, the discovery engine, the screener, the options play, chickenanalytics.com slash options. But we'd like to reduce the price to 17 Monday night, midnight of Labor Day weekend. Now, in addition, you get intraday charts, my weekly market insights, Joe's small group tutorials. If you need one-on-one -on -one coaching, we offer it. John Schlitz's morning insights. And because we did one-on-one -on -one coaching for Ken H, we got this incredible testimonial on July 30th from 235,000 to a million two in seven months. I've been trading stock options for many years without much success. On January 4th, 17, I found your system. I started the year with 235. As of today, my net liquidation is a million two. I've not been able to achieve this without your system. Ken H got a couple of one-on-one -on -one sessions with Josh Midland, our options strategist, and the results have been spectacular. And so to try and encourage you to achieve what Ken H did, we'd like to offer a special fast action bonus. If you subscribe by midnight tonight, we'd like to take an additional $100 off, reducing the price of Chaken Analytics by $300 to $1,650, but you have to subscribe by midnight tonight. My salespeople tell me that I'm being too um, soft by letting this slip three or four days. It's not fair to the people who step up and buy it tonight. So if you subscribe tonight, you can be one, on one of Joe Bacella's webinars tomorrow, um, uh, his onboarding session, chickenanalytics.com slash options. I'd like to thank Tony Zhang for an incredible performance with no rehearsal and uh, for all the knowledge that he always shares with the Chaken community. Thank you, Mark, and thanks, everyone. All right, everyone. Uh, so thanks for sticking with us. Um, I want to just go ahead and pull up a quick image here. I just chatted out for everybody the link to chakenanalytics.com forward slash options. Again, that's sixteen fifty for a full year to Chaken Analytics. Um, this includes, I, I saw a few questions here. Does this include one-on-one -on -one training? Yes, it does. No additional cost. Um, the support webinars that Mark just mentioned, no additional cost. That is all included as a uh, subscription to Chaken Analytics. And so, uh, Obviously, your success is our success. Uh, we want to make sure that anybody with access to our program is doing well, and that all begins on tomorrow's onboard session. Um, so if you click the link in the chat box, again, this will take you right to the fulfillment page. That discount code will automatically be applied. That's $16.50 for a full year to Jake and Analytics. Um, and again, this includes recordings of all the support webinars prov we provided. We're coming up on a three-day weekend, and we have an entire library of recordings that we've uh, assembled over the past few days. Uh, so we'd love for you to check that information out, including a three-part options training series that our colleague Josh Minlin uh, hosts. Uh, some of you joined us for our 415 webinar. Josh hosts an entire introductory, uh, intermediate, and advanced session. All of that content is available for you right now. It would be great for you to check out over the weekend. Uh, but this whole process starts, of course, by taking advantage of uh, the Mark's discounted offer, $16.50 for a full year to Chaken Analytics. Uh, if you have any questions at all, please give us a call at 877-978-6257. Uh, we're going to be sticking around a little bit later tonight to talk to you and see if you, uh, you have any questions about the program or providing any kind of clarification that we can offer. Uh, but until then, uh, we want to thank you again for joining us. In the meantime, have a wonderful evening, and we will see you on tomorrow's onboard session.